Hello, welcome to the CCNA training course brought to you by Eduonix. Uh, now we're going to be looking at uh, reading and switching still, but we're going to take a look at STP and PBSTP. So STP, the Spelling Tree Protocol, is an older network protocol that ensures a loop-free topology for any bridged Ethernet local area network. The basic function of STP is to prevent bridge loops and the broadcast radiation that results from them. Spelling tree also allows a network design to include spare or redundant links to provide automatic backup paths if an active link fails, without the danger of bridge loops or the need for manual enabling and disabling of these backup links. So you know sometimes back in the day when you know Windows 95, Windows 98, you'd be pinging a box and then somehow Every so often you'd get two responses for every ping and then it, it would say DUP next to it, DUP, with an with a exclamation mark. That's usually because it, uh, the, the packet's being sent down two different routes to the same destination and it's replied to both of them at the same time. STP would prevent that from happening. And also, after STP you have PVSTP, which is per VLAN STP. It maintains spanning tree instances for each VLAN configured on the network. It uses ISL trunking and allows a VLAN trunk to be forwarded for some VLANs while blocking for other VLANs. And since PVSTP treats each VLAN as a separate network, it has the ability to load balance traffic at layer 2 by forwarding some VLANs on one trunk and other VLANs on another trunk without causing a spanning tree loop. And now we have RSTP, Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol. One big disadvantage of STP is a low convergence which is very important in a switch network. To overcome this problem in about 2000-2001 um, the uh, IEEE introduced the, e the evolution of uh, the spanning tree protocol, rapid spanning tree protocol, which significantly reduces convergence um, after a topology change occurs in the network. STP can take like 30 or 50 seconds or even over a minute um, to transition from a blocking state to a forwarding state. RSTP typically is able to respond in less than 10 seconds of a physical link failure, which makes it a great candidate for failover. RSTP works by adding alternative port and backup ports compared to STP. These ports are allowed to immediately enter the forwarding state rather than passively wait for the network to converge. An RSTP bridge port rules would be a root port, which is a forwarding port that is close, that closest to the root bridge in terms of path cost. So this would be best path to root bridge, best path to root bridge, that way, that way. Uh, you have a designated port, which is a forwarding port for every LAN segment. You have an alternative port, which is a best alternative path to the root bridge. This path is different um, than using the root port, and the alternative port moves the forwarding state if there is a, a failure on the designated port for that segment. You then have a backup port, which is a backup or redundant path to a segment where another bridge or is already connected. Backup port allows. Uh, sorry, the, the backup port applies only when a single switch has two links in the same segment. Uh, well, sorry, in the same collision domain. And to have two links to the same collision domain, the switch must be attached to a hub. And then you have a disabled port state, which isn't strictly part of STP. A network admin can manually disable a port. Okay, so let's get on Packet Tracer now, back on our network, and um, let's do some RSTP examples. We're going to have to add in some routers here, first of all. Um, so, uh, another switch in here to create a loop. So, we'll do that, and then we'll, we'll go through STP, PVSTP, and RSTP, and the setup of each one. 